couple of years ago, I put up a short on how I knew AI wasn't going to take my job. And wow, it's been a winner of a short. And my point was that Copilot wasn't good enough to replace me, and it's not good enough now, years later. And I'm pretty confident that most folks agree with me on that. But I was also wrong, because AI is having an impact on the tech job market. An AI engineer like Copilot isn't going to directly take our jobs, but the job market is increasingly looking for developers with AI experience and AI skills. Companies are investing heavily in AI, and I'm not just talking about the billions going into AI-specific companies. I'm talking about the companies in the e-commerce or healthcare or IT or IoT space. These are across the board. Companies are looking to add AI features to their applications, and AI features are developed by engineers with AI skills. So here's a Twitter poll I just did. I asked if companies were getting pushed by their boards and their investors to implement AI features, and about half of respondents said that that was happening. And this janky poll that I did doesn't even count for companies that already had AI on their roadmap. So that's half. Half of the companies you'll interview with are going to want to use AI in their apps. And given a fixed budget, those companies are going to be looking to prioritize jobs that have AI skills over non-AI related jobs. But if you're rolling your eyes thinking all the stuff you had to learn to get to where you are, and now you got to learn this crazy math stuff to become an AI developer, don't worry about that. There are lots of AI-related skills that companies will need beyond that AI architect work that requires differential calculus. But I can understand why you'd think that, because there's very little content out there that covers what I'm calling applied AI. There are talks and there's papers at the high end that look crazy complex and are very scary. And then there's like these simple how-tos that really don't teach much beyond how to use an API from a particular vendor. And they don't really cover how that AI really works internally. So what I'm going to do on this channel is I'm going to show you in the context of the technologies that you already know, like web and React, how to use AI to build applications at different levels of complexity. At the starting level, we'll do stuff like chatbots, and at the more advanced level, we'll be doing prompt engineering, chaining, rags. In fact, let me talk to you how I'm thinking about those levels in terms of progression, so you understand more about what I'm talking about. So at the base level, there's just getting experience with calling remotely hosted AI APIs like OpenAI or Hugging Face. The only twist there is that with those types of APIs, Beyond the usual REST APIs that we're used to is that they're streaming APIs. The good news is that there are NPM libraries out there that handle that streaming complexity. And they also have good examples about how to use them. In fact, in most cases, those are chatbot examples. So I would say at this level, you want to create your own chatbot, an application that demonstrates how you use those APIs. And certainly, it's examples like chatbots and steps up from that that I'm going to show you more of on this channel because I think that you can learn two things at the same time. You could learn, for example, if I'm demonstrating an XJS feature, how to use that feature, but also how to implement it within the context of an AI app, so you're learning how the XJS stuff works, but also how the AI stuff works. And I'm not just leaning towards AI on this channel, I'm also doing my conference talks. I spoke recently at Infinite Red's Chain React conference on how to use local-first AI models in React Native applications, which is honestly, really cool. I'll put a link to that talk in the description right down below. And speaking of Infinite Red, I'm proud to say that they are sponsoring not only this video, but also this channel. And if you don't know who Infinite Red are, they are a React Native con expert consultancy that helps small and medium and large sized businesses across all verticals build really quality React Native applications. I'm happy to say that the folks over at Infinite Red are friends of mine. They're experienced developers and great supporters of the React Native community, hosting their really awesome Chain React conference every year in my hometown here, Portland, Oregon. And they've got a great podcast, React Native Radio. You should tune in for that. They also build open source libraries like the amazing Ignite framework. Now, if you're not familiar with Ignite, Ignite makes it really easy to get started building React Native applications by giving you built-in support for all the common features that every app needs, but which aren't in the framework. A full nav system, I18N, robust API access layers, and a lot more. It's great stuff. So if you want to get started with React Native, 
I'd recommend starting with Infinite Red's Ignite framework. And if your company needs some help getting started with React Native or getting their app over the finish line, Infinite Red is a fantastic company to work with to get that done. All right, so let's say you built your chatbot application and you understand streaming and how to make API requests to open AI or hugging face. So what, what comes next? Prompt engineering, whether it's a large language model or LLM like Llama or GPT-4.0 or an image generator like MidJourney, understanding how to control the AI using system and user prompts and how to format those is very valuable in the marketplace. A fun example of this level would be building like an image-driven application that sends an image to an image AI to detect features and then, for example, makes snarky comments about it. You learn how to send images to the AI and how to design a prompt to leverage those images to get the type of response you want. And that is prompt engineering. Leveling up from that is understanding AI context and rags. So my friend Steve over at Builder, he's got a company that leverages a lot of AI features in their products. And so he's got some great takes on applied AI, including this tweet where he says, large language models, think GPT-4.0, are literally the most unreliable technology of all time, followed by FM Bluetooth. Definitely agree with him on that. But after an absurd amount of trial and error, we've internally created a set of rules for making LLMs considerably more reliable. And then he's got some prompt code where he talks about restricting an LLM with a RAG. So what's a RAG? Well, RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation which means that before you call the AI, you get all the data that it should be looking at and you give it that information and restrict it to just that information for its responses. The result is that you get a much more accurate and constrained response that doesn't hallucinate or go off the rails. And so this is the level where AI start to get real and practical for companies. So we'll be diving a lot more into rags and how to build them and how to use them with various types of AI models. So at this level, you want to, as an example, build an app that connects to an external data source like database to retrieve data and then send it along with the user prompt to get better results. For example, you could add AI to a to-do list application and send the to-dos along with the user prompt to get more focused results for the customer. Conceptually, the step up from there is getting into selecting different types of models like vision models or embedding models and understanding what model to use for what application and then to select between different models in that category to find the best model for your particular application, considering things like price and performance and context window size and all of that. And then on top of that, using several models in a chain. So you take the output of one AI request and then put that into the input for another request. For example, an app that would take a visual model to extract features from an image and then use an LLM model to take those features and answer questions about it or create a story around it, that would be a fantastic example application at this level. Conceptually, the last level you get to before you really need to understand all that math and that modeling is the fine tuning level. That's where you take an existing model and use the fine tuning layers to tune it to your specific use case. It's kind of like RAG, but where at the end you get a model that you don't need to hint to constrain since it already has the knowledge of your space though you could constrain it in a RAG style to get better results for a specific question. And then the final level I would say up at the top there is where you're creating entirely new models. And what I'm thinking about here are PhD level folks who are architecting novel AI models. And I think that when people think about AI jobs, that's the level that they think about. But as you can see, there are so many levels of practical AI skills before you get to that PhD level differential calculus stuff. And there are also some good complementary skills in the AI space that add on to skills that you might already have. For example, there's operations work, in terms of scaling AI, projecting AI costs, architecting APIs around AI models, access controls, throttling, all of that stuff. That's a critical piece in any kind of deployed AI. There's also pipeline construction, how do you get data into the AI, how to manage that whole process and flow, how to clean that data. That would be things like data sciences. So there's a lot of work in that space. There's also UI work in the AI space. A lot of folks talk about how we haven't yet seen the ideal UIs for AI, and I definitely agree with that. So you're thinking things like 
data visualization around AI, as well as a new field called generative UI. That's where you've got the AI hinting the UI on the types of visualizations to use for the data that it's generating. That is awesome stuff. There's also native AI, local first AI, embedded AI. If you're in, say, the small device or IoT space, these are all fascinating skill areas that really complement an understanding of the underlying mechanics of AI. There's just so much FUD around AI, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. LLMs can seem like magic, but it's not magic. It's, it's just math. And the more you dig into it, the more you'll demystify it for yourself. But also, I, I think you'll get excited by the possibilities of it. And you can do some really cool stuff with AI. And we really haven't even started to scratch the surface of that. And really, I'm doing this for myself and my own learning as much as I'm doing it for you. I've been a little freaked out about AI too. And learning the limited amount that I have about it has helped me comprehend and contextualize it better. And just to be less freaked out about it. So I'm hoping that as I learn more and as I teach more to you, that we can together get a better handle on how to understand AI and how to use it really well. I just encourage you to be open-minded and keep watching this channel. We're going to make lots of cool projects where we'll continue to learn the web and React stuff, but also at the same time, understand more about how AI works and how to use it in interesting and novel ways. A friend of mine who's been in the AI space for a long time and even written books about it talks about how we're handling AI right now in terms of an earthquake. So an earthquake has two discrete sections. There's a P wave where you get the initial punch of the earthquake where it just bang, everything changes. And there's a delay. And then there is the rolling S waves that do a lot more of the damage as the earthquake continues. In this case, it's not already doing so much damage that is making changes. So right now in this model, we're right after the initial hit of the P wave. AI has come in, it's shaking stuff up. We're like, whoa, where is this coming from? And then now we're kind of starting to digest it a little bit more. We're like, okay, now we're starting to see how we can apply this and where it can go. And then, then we'll start seeing the real changes as we start seeing AI integrated in more interesting and novel ways into applications. So that's, that's kind of where I see AI. And if it's good to be in any part of the wave, I think it's best to be at this part of the wave. We're just starting to learn how to use it and get our skills so we can help build those applications. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you stick around with me and learn more about how to use our full stack skills in the AI space and build some really awesome applications. In the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.